Hello, everyone. My name is Zeenat Islam, and I'm the Relations Manager Academia Network at UNIS Center. Welcome to the 45th session of our YSBC Web Lecture Series on the topic of healthcare through social business. Our distinguished guest speaker will be Mr. Shamshul Haq Ahmed, Managing Director of Grameen Healthcare Services. And the session today will be moderated by Ms. Nazneen Sultana, Executive Vice Chairman of Grameen Communications. Mr. Shamshul Haq Ahmed uh, brings more than 25 years of corporate experience, including 14 years in top management position. His career track includes operations and business development, uh, sales administration, market development, and project management. Presently, he's working as the managing director of Grameen Healthcare Services Limited, as well as performing the responsibilities of managing director at Shamajik Health Science Institute and Research Center. About our moderator, Ms. Nazneen Sultana is serving as the Executive Vice Chairman of Grameen Communications. She served as the Managing Director and the Executive CEO of Grameen Communications since its inception in 1997. At Grameen Communications, she led various projects for reaching ICT to remote villages and the development of the world's first and complete microbanking software that's being used in more than 200 MFIs, including Grameen Bank. Now she's also serving as the country manager of Uglena Corporation Japan, the liaison office in ba of Bangladesh. Apart from this, she's performing responsibilities as chairman of two social business ventures. She serves as an executive member of NGOs that deal with gender issues, affordable healthcare for the poor, women empowerment, and ICT for uh, development. So today's uh, session on healthcare um, will be very informative, I'm sure, and we look forward to listening to the conversation. Uh, now I welcome Professor Mahmoud Yunus for his opening remarks. Professor Yunus. Hello, thank you very much. Uh, delighted to be with you. I have a problem with my camera. Okay, got it. Uh, everybody, how are you? Uh, we have a wonderful uh, session today uh, relating to healthcare. And it's very uh, central to everything that uh, we do through social business. Uh, we see healthcare is one area where uh, social business can, can do wonderful things. So today we'll be hearing about healthcare uh, and with the people uh, that will be talking to you today with, as a moderator, uh, of course, uh, Nazneen Sultana who's a long experience with our work. And she's the core, in the core of everything that we do because she has access to all the information because she controls the information technology. So she has a, a view of all the things that we do in a, particularly uh, in a daily basis. Uh, instantaneously, she can have access to information. She is very active in policymaking also in all these programs. So she's the right person to be moderating this. And of course, healthcare is a massive area. And we have chosen uh, for discussion as a speaker, uh, Shamsul Haq Ahmed. He is again a very central figure in our healthcare system right now. Uh, he he runs uh, several eye care hospitals. If you would probably elaborate on that. This is an exciting experience. It's a one healthcare center, one, one uh, eye care center can help produce the second health care uh, eye care center and the third eye care center and all of them together, the fourth eye care center, how the sustainability plays a very important role in social business and can also expansion comes naturally to it. So this is one area and be, along with every single uh, eye care hospital, there's a vision center. These are kind of satellite uh, uh, centers where anybody can walk in and get the eyes tested and so on. And then if you have difficulty, refer back to the uh, hospital and do the other things. So this is one area that he'll be talking about. He's also central because he has he's running the uh, nursing college. He's in a position of a uh, uh, wonderful position of seeing how the development of this nursing college is taking place and what the future is in the nursing college about. So this is another direction that he, uh, he controls and he uh, guides uh, the policies and so on uh, on the nursing college. There, there is a, supposed to be a second nursing college coming up uh, in Chittagong. So there will be a series of nursing college. Hopefully we can produce out of the nursing college that we have right now. And then we are having a mega project 
a mega hospital, a uh, 500 bed hospital with a medical college, with a research institution. And uh, Shamshilak is right in the middle of it. So he has lots of things to talk about. Today, probably he will focus on uh, eye care hospital and uh, nursing college and so on, because there are so many things to talk about. So I'll uh, let you hear what he has to say and invite uh, Nazneen to take over. Nazneen, now floor is yours. You continue your discussion. It's an exciting <clears throat> discussion we are waiting for. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Introduction and your sir, valuable comments out there. So I welcome Mr. Shamsul Haq Ahmed. He is the uh, core person of the healthcare services. So, uh, so we can start our conversation. Let's start the, our discussion. So I know healthcare service is, uh, is a running in a social business model, in a social business way. So you are an engineer and at the same time you are the business graduate. So how you adopting yourself in the social business model in our healthcare services uh, company, uh, how you adopt and how you adjust so please tell us something about this. Yeah. Yes, <clears throat> very good evening, Appa. And, and thank you for inviting me for this exciting session. In fact, uh, you started with a very dramatic question. And I would term this question as the most uh, frequently asked question I've been facing since I joined Garmin Healthcare. So uh, as I as, uh, said during my introduction, that I have 25 years of uh, uh, hardcore corporate experience working for several industries, uh, namely uh, manufacturing, uh, energy, real estate, all this kind of uh, exposure I, I do have gathered in, in the journey of my 25 years career. So it's all about, you know, the traditional business. It's all about the top line, bottom line, market share, all these kind of things. Interestingly, I, I, I have a small background. I would like to mention it now. It's like that a couple of years back, uh, I suddenly came across few books, uh, which are all written by our great Nobel laureate, Professor Yunus. And namely, I would name two, uh, two or three of those. One of those uh, is, uh, is The Banker to the Poor. And then I came across the building, the social business part of it. And the, another book I named is, is The World of Three Zeros. These are the three which I read very comprehensively. And what happened, you know, that uh, that grows an intense hunger to know about more is uh, about the social business part of it and all other relevant uh, aspects of this kind of uh, operation, what this social business means. So since that period, what happened, uh, the, uh, the another uh, important aspect of the social business is uh, uh, is absolutely that it always deals with one or more social problems. So combining all this together, as I say, that I grew a huge inter interest level in me, in me, in inside me to work about this. So what happened? I also had a hidden desire for working for community and society that uh, itself was there. So. Uh, once I got, uh, came across all these uh, uh, social business uh, ideas, principles, guiding principles, all these things, and I found that uh, it could not be, there can be no other better option than working uh, in the, uh, staying in the platform of social business. So that was the first motivation I had. And accordingly, I started inquiring about the Grameen Group and all these things. I applied for a suitable position and in all it clicked. So I, 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 through a rigorous process of selection, I was finally selected and was one assigned with this uh, Garmin Healthcare Services. And as, uh, as, as, the, as long as the adapt part, adapting part of it, I, I am using my experience of 25 years uh, of managing several businesses uh, and 14 years of which I, I played in the role of the head of the business role. So it's all about irrespective of the format of the business, uh, the principles, basic principle of business remains same. It works about, you know, growth. It works about sustainability. It works about cash flow to support the business. So these things remain same, irrespective of the format of the business, whether it is, is social business, uh, uh, usual business, traditional business, whatever you call it. 
So I'm using all my experience and maturity, which I earned over the years for running other organizations. I'm doing the same here. And I'm sure I will be able to uh, contribute heavily with the vision and the mission of this Garmin Healthcare Services. So, so you're enjoying your job and yeah. you're enjoying the super happiness in the social business model, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I, I have gone across my, uh, passed across my honeymoon period. So my progression is over. So learning curve is over. So it's time to deliver. So I'm working and with, with my board of directors, honorable chairman, everybody is there. So working hand in hand to achieve, to reach to our destinations. So another point, I just uh, thinking, I mean, healthcare service in the name, it is the full healthcare. But Gamil healthcare system dealing with the, with the eye care, only the eye care as is its first stepping stone. So can you um, clarify this side, why the eye care? Okay, okay. Thanks again, Appa. Thanks again. So before I reply to this particular question, I would like to touch upon the entire healthcare ecosystem of Gramin Group. So Gramin Group is presently having four distinct SBUs under his healthcare umbrella. The one is what uh, is the coming healthcare services, which is mainly dealing with eye. As of now, as of today, it's dealing with eye, all eye care services. There is, there is another wing, which we call Garmin Digital Healthcare, GDH, which gives digital solution to the health problems of the, uh, of the, of the patients and all other relevant staffs. And the third wing is Gamin Kollan, which serves with uh, primary healthcare uh, services, primary healthcare services across the country. And presently, it is having uh, close to 160 such healthcare services, where from where it provides the primary healthcare services. And all of these operating in the distant area, so that it can reach to the people, those who are underprivileged, and not that much of uh, capability in terms of financing and everything, all these kind of stuff. And the fourth wing, which is uh, operating, uh, will be will be operating is 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 a is a mega one where there will be a 500 bed hospital, tertiary hospital, teaching hospital, uh, accompanied with a medical college of 500 seats, accompanied with another uh, research institute where the all the all the technicians will come, and of course uh, the, there is also a, already uh, there is uh, a nursing college. So you see, if you add up sum up all these all this SBUs under the umbrella of Gramin Healthcare, it, it, is, it, is, it is very much clearly uh, seen that it is working in all the possible areas of healthcare as a whole, the ecosystem, and as a whole, uh, and, uh, uh, addressing all the points that a healthcare can cover. It is operating in all these areas. So now I get coming back to your question, the why, why, uh, why Gramin Healthcare System is dealing with I only? So in this matter, the firstly, I would like to tell, I would like to give a picture of Bangladesh of uh, eye care system. Presently, we are having a, a population of more than 170 million. And the required number, according to the national, uh, international standard, the number of eye doctors, what we call it ophthalmologists, is supposed to be 3,000 plus. But unfortunately, we do have less than half number of optimums available in our country. So this is one uh, picture I'm drawing. And the, the, another part of uh, the other aspect of this eye care part is already 750,000 adults are having blindness and alarmingly 48,000 children are already blind. And approximately there is another data which shows that 2.5 million people are at the risk of developing diabetic retinopathy, which is of course a leading cause of blindness. So seeing all this together, so healthcare, it, it, it's, it's a bigger basket, no doubt about it. But considering the importance part of it, considering the social impact part of it, con considering the uh, uh, participation, people's participation, women participation, male participation part of it, we opted I to our stepping stone to start with our journey. And secondly, Another part is, the other aspect I would like to highlight is that eye disease, these are very common and can go unnoticed for a long, long time. And some do not have any symptoms in the, in the, in the first time. 
So what happens? Uh, uh, slowly and gradually, that leads to so many eye problems if it is not addressed in due course of time. So this is another area where we found that we need to create that amount of that level of awareness among the people, among the mass people, especially in the distant areas of the country, in the remote areas of the country. So we can create that awareness to get rid of these eye problems and ultimately to work uh, with more awareness about the eye health. Next it comes, we always term eye problems as a silent killer. It, it, my, we always, uh, you know, there is always needless blindness, which we can eradicate with our proper effort. And the vision and the mission and the, ob and the business objective of Grameen Healthcare, we are very much on with this. We have prepared our homework. We, we, have, prepared, we have our milestones. We have our goals, destinations, that how we go about it. But of course, I would say that as of today, it is I, but it is not all about I in, the, in our future journey. We are working on a few other areas, and of course, very soon, we will be adapting uh, gradually more things, which, which really leads to the overall improvement of the society in terms of uh, overall healthiness and athletic ability and better quality of life. This is one area. But in this regard, I would like to mention one paradoxical statement, which says, Absolutely, that 80% of our eye problem, having eye problem, mass people are living in the distant areas. On the other hand, 80%, 80 to 90% of our ophthalmologists, eye doctors, they are more or around city or other urban areas. So you see a complete, uh, you know, a reverse picture, which is not supposed to be. So we are working on that. So we, we feel like that we can be a pioneer in, in solving the eye problems, pioneering to create the eye health awareness across the mass people, according to our, you know, strategy and everything. Thank you. As you know, you are working in the village remote places for the eye care, vision center, and etc. So my question is, how do you keep the doctor in the remote places? Yeah, yeah. This is, this is, uh, this is a very, 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 very valid question. Very important question. Uh, if I talk about the challenges, what we are facing uh, while working in social business and especially in the and eye care I, part, yeah, yeah, there are a series of challenges. Uh, we, are, we are combating each day, day in, day out. We are working uh, with these challenges and working out uh, gradually and slowly to the, to the level of our uh, goal. Uh, the first challenge we face, what we have rightly said, the, the shortage of ophthalmologists, eye doctors. So as I say, we are having less than half number of eye doctors, which is supposed to be having in our uh, uh, fold in the country's uh, entire area. So, so this is one challenge. What we do in the, from our uh, Gamin eye hospitals, we, we prepare a proper, we look at those areas where we find a relatively better availability of ophthalmologists, seeing the medical colleges where these are available. This, uh, this part, we always take care of it. And then once we recruit any doctor, we hire any doctor, we, we, do, we do it in a very comprehensive manner. We, we do a proper career mapping of each eye doctors so that he is well motivated to work with us, which gives us a better retention period of it. We train them, we, we, we tra uh, continuously train them, we help them to get higher degrees. And this is how we create a bonding with ophthalmologists and we prepare a separate uh, career mapping for them so that they remain motivated to stick with Grameen Healthcare Services Hospitals. This is one. The second challenge I would like to say, what I have already mentioned, that the lack of awareness about the eye health. This is another point of concern. As I said earlier, that this, it, in most of the cases, it's, it remains unnoticed. So what happens? So we need to create that awareness so that they can have, have their eye health checkup. It is not that costly. This is, this is absolutely, it does not cost you that much, but it helps you a lot. So this is where we are working. This is another challenge we are facing. The other challenge we are facing is absolutely uh, for any eye care setup. If you want to really have a good setup, standard setup uh, of, of good standard, then it will require high initial cost. So this is another challenge we see, but we are overcoming all these things with our proper business planning and everything. Another challenge I would say, as you were asking about the challenges is, we do not have sufficient number of eye institutes where the eye 
where the we the trained manpower are being developed in the ophthalmologist area. So we do not have much of it. So we have to go for the foreign uh, institutes or something like that. So this is another area where we need to work upon and we are facing our challenges. But we are working again. We are Presently, yeah. do you have any training program or capacity building program with the existing doctors? Yeah, absolutely. 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 We have, as I said, that because uh, uh, we have very rigorous, very rigorous training capacity building programs and, you know, uh, all other uh, skill building programs. So there are a few areas where you need retina, you need glaucoma, you, you have uh, cornea related problems, you have cataract problems, so, so on and so forth. So there are so many areas we work on. So as I say, for, for any hospital, we proper, we, firstly, we prepare a proper manpower mapping. The, 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 how we place and how do we place all these uh, clinical stuff and all of the stuff. So made, made, once we made finalize the plan, then we search for the doctors, we, we hire them, we recruit them, and we train them according to our need. And this is how uh, we make sure that all our clinical staff, doctors, eye doctors, and other associated staff are being trained uh, with the requirement of the hospital, with the requirement of the patients, and all this kind of stuff. Next, it comes okay. that... Yeah, sorry. Okay, okay, go on. Yeah. Next, it comes that I, I, I must talk about uh, that the financial incapability. As, as, as an essence of the social business model, we do not operate in the areas where it is where the resources are available. We, we opt for those areas where it is hard to reach. It is, is, uh, it is in the distant areas, in the remote areas where we prefer always to have our, uh, our, our eye care setups. So the financial incapability, in some cases, the financial incapability also matters to the patients. This, uh, this uh, people, they do not have, they cannot afford this much of year. We, we come up with the solution. We, we, sub, we subsidize them based on their financial condition. In, 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 in many cases, we give them free surgery. We do, so we do all these things to manage their financial problems. And then ex again, it comes, the eye care services, these are all concentrated in the urban and city areas, as I say. So, uh, and all the ophthalmologists are also concentrated to those areas. So this is another, again, another challenge to move to those remote areas. But again, we are managing with our uh, planning and proper uh, mapping with all these uh, things. So these are the few challenges we are facing. But of course, we have our, we have our counter strategy to overcome these challenges. And slowly and gradually, we are on with our journey. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so who are your patients? Can you please tell us your, about the patient profile in various contexts? What are the segments of the patient segment? Can you tell us about this briefly? Okay. So, another thank you. Thank you. This is another important uh, part of this entire. Yeah. And also, please, men please mention the male and female ratio also. Oh, that's what you want. Of course, of course, of course. I will come in detail with this. Because for the necessity of our business, we do analyze our patient profile for various purposes. The purposes, namely, you know, to reach our operational excellence, we need to analyze this. To decide about our service strategy, we need to analyze these patient profiles. To setting up new hospitals, we use this data. We use these uh, patient profiles for setting up any new hospital or eye care center. And of course, to reach our target group, we also need to have this kind of analysis and the customer profiling. We do this analysis, we do this uh, profiling in many ways. One of these ways we do the age-wise profiling, where it shows that zero to 16 age group of people, we are having 17% of the patients. So from the age group of 17 to 40, we are having 35 of the patients, 35% of the patients. In the age group of 41 <coughs> to 50, we are having 16% of the patients. 51 to 60, we are having 15% of the patients. And 61 to 70, we are having 12% of patients. So this is the main clutter areas where we do focus. And it is clearly evident that the highest contributor is from the age group of 17 to 40, which, uh, which, which, which contributes 35% 35, 35 of the patient profile. And most of these patients, they come up with the refractive errors, not uh, big time errors, because over the age, the, 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 the eye problems gets critical, gets complex. So this is how we do. So this is one way of looking at it. 
<laughs> you, uh, as, as you said that, that you wanted to know about the uh, male and female ratio. So we see a quite inter encouraging picture, picture. While we analyze this ratio, we see that 52% of our patients, they are female and the rest 48 are the male. So we see that the participation of female uh, is, is absolutely is, is encouraging. And other way of looking at things that we have new patients and we also have review patients. So we also do analyze these things because these have got something to do about our operation strategy, our business strategy, how we go about it. So we do all these things, all, uh, we play about with all these numbers, which helps us to determine our strategy, to fine tune our operational plans, everything. So in this regard, I would say that our new patient is, is percentage is close to 64, 63, 4 percent around, and the rest 36, 37 is around review patients. So these are the areas. These are the areas where we do the analysis of uh, patient profiling, and it helps us to in for our future journeys. Thank you. You know, in the social business model, sustainability is the one core point. So it's also a challenge. Also, so how do you ensure the business sustainability? Uh, within your healthcare services, in the hospital or in the services. Okay, thank you. <laughs> another another important question. But sustainability <coughs> is, uh, has got nothing to do with social business only. I believe for all business sustainability, it stands. Uh, unless you are sustainable, you cannot go uh, further. So it is like any other business. In social business sustainability is absolutely important. So we take we take few measures where we, uh, which ensures our uh, sustainability part. And first and foremost thing, the fundamental difference from the usual business and the social business, I see that we, we do not follow the rule of maximizing. Rather, we follow the rule of optimizing because we, we do not focus much into this profitability part. Rather, we focus more into our sustainability part so that we can recover our costs so we can run healthily, we can run with proper basic things. So the first thing we do is optimization of all our resources, not only human resources, our equipmental resources, our clinical resources, our any other resources. So we make sure that we are making optimum use of all these resources. So once this we reach to this optimum level of usage, it of, uh, automatically it increases our capacity utilization and it helps our sus uh, achieving the sustainability part. This is one, the first thing we do. The second focus we do is the cost optimization. Because in all areas, we have detected, always uh, uh, identified all the core cost drivers, and we make sure that we are championing in all those areas. So unless we become cost champion, we cannot be sustainable. That's a very basic rule for all business. Of course, social business, it applies, it applies to all business. So we have a very uh, big focus on the cost part. So it does not go out of the way, which remains within the standards. We follow all these things and we make sure that we always optimize our cost thing. So again, social business is, is of course another form of business. We make sure our business focus is not being diluted, is not being distracted. So we make sure each year we make a, a annual business plan. All the numbers are there. Uh, all the qualitative aspects are there and we have a rigorous follow-up in the board meetings, in our internal uh, meetings that we make sure that we go by our plan. So we make sure that our business focus is not lost or is, is not even diluted. This is another area where it helps us to achieve that sustainability. Here, here you can share your future plan also. You have already four hospitals and next future plan with the yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. This is, uh, thank you. Thank you for this uh, next uh, uh, question. Is, of course, it is just a year back, we ended up with our vision 2030. So we made it, we placed it to the board and honorable board was kind, uh, 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 has approved our plan. We turned this as vision 2030. We, we exercised it very rigorously, very comprehensive exercise we have made. We have made all, necessary homeworks, and we made a final plan, which we term as Vision 2030, which is 10 years from now. So all this 23, not 10 years, we made it one year back. So we call it more or less 10 years plan. So the interesting shift of, the, I, before going to that future part, I like to touch upon the present part of it. Presently, we are uh, equipped with four secondary hospitals and eight vision centers, which 
basically provide the primary eye care services. This is what we have now in our basket. So keeping ahead that 2030 vision, that this will move to bigger numbers. Likewise, by end of 10 years, we'd like to have eight secondary hospitals, one complete tertiary eye hospitals, 40 um, vision centers, which provides the primary eye care. So theoretically, I would say that presently we are operating in two tier business model. One is the primary part of it and the second is the secondary part of it. But the way we evolve our business 10 years from now, 2030, we will find ourselves in a five tier business model. Uh, the models will be on the top, it will be tertiary and then it comes the secondary and it comes the primary. It comes about three. Now, still, there are two more tier is left. So we have discovered, we have worked out two more modules, two more, um, uh, mod two more tiers to operate our business in a more precise, more focused manner. So we call it the first of this uh, kind is like semi-secondary. Uh, this is another tier where it will place between the primary and secondary part with few number of with a slightly increased number of services. And the next year, which we call it the uh, higher secondary uh, tier. So which will again place between secondary and the tertiary part of it. So which will again offer few more offer than the secondary and few less offers, number of offers than the third. So we see ourselves in a very uh, five tier model. We graduate to that level and we are working and, and not for, we are waiting for 2030, keeping yeah. ahead our 10 years uh, anything. I'm else? going to ask you about the, your vision. 2030. I heard okay. about that you have the vision for the 2030. You have planned. Yeah. So, 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 okay. So, okay. Thank you. So, to reach to that 2030, it is not that we are sitting in 2020 and we wake up at 2030. We have put some uh, intermediary milestones that all of these setups, as I said, that we will be having one tertiary eye hospital. We'll be having eight secondary eye hospital. We'll be having 40 uh, primary eye care centers. So we have put our roadmaps and we have made year on year plan milestones so that we reach to that level of uh, scale of operation. And of course, it is it is it is easy to play, uh, write these numbers on the drawing board, but of course it's, it's very hard uh, to manage. So we, are, we have started working on this about our resource planning. So we are doing all this plan well ahead so that we make sure we do not miss the trains. We can go about the plans, what we have said, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Uh, so each year we have uh, separate milestones and we have, have uh, carrying on with very strong focus on all the milestones and we are working very proactively so that again, I, I, we do not want to miss the train. We really mean to reach to that level of our operation to scale of that operation. Okay, we don't have very much time. So I, I have the quick question to you. That is the high, how you the differentiate itself with the other segments who are working in other, uh, engaged in the same segment in other people, other eye care hospitals, how you differentiate uh, itself? Yeah, thank you. But this is another very, very, very critical question. Uh, again, I would say uh, it is not all about social business model. For any business, for any industry, we need to have very clear distinction, own distinctions, where people can really differentiate yourself from others. And, and in business, we call it differentiators or we call it USPs, unique selling propositions. So, and for service industry, as I is completely a service industry, we require more this number of differentiators. So day in, day out, we are working, we are analyzing ourselves that how we can create some differentiators where people can differentiate us from others in terms of services, in terms of our offerings, in terms of everything we do. So few of the differentiators I would like to mention here is, is we absolutely work with the state of the art equipment and the most modern one. So we do not make we any compromise or for having this the most modern and the state of the art equipment. To, to deliver the best in the market. This is one area we do. As I say, we have a very rigorous plan to, for training our uh, people. So machine is important, but the man behind the machine is equally important. So we make sure the man behind the machine, they're very much ready to operate the way we want 
and the way we aspire, we desire, and the, of course, to the level of expectation of the patients. So this is very important and we, we follow very rigorous process of training and we put good amount of budget so that we make sure our people are well trained and well. Uh, the, in, another important part, we are having strong collaboration with the big names in the eye care. Uh, I mean, big, by saying big names, I do not mean the local big names, it's uh, global big names. I would like to few names here is Seva Foundation from USA. We, work, we are in collaboration with Orbis International, again from USA. We work with Fred Hollows from Australia. We work with Arvind Eye Care System from Arvind India. So these are the few names. So this collaboration helps us to go a long way. We are in strong collaboration, working hand in hand. So this business pattern is helping us a lot. The other thing where we create a differentiation is that we religiously follow the patient's past culture. So this is always our priority. As we are working in the service industry, we are working with the patients. So the patient's first, patient's first culture is very important. <coughs> Next, it comes that we embed a strong value system. This is very important that we always carry a, a value about, about the value systems. We care about it and we all our acts and deeds make sure that this following all the value systems. Of course, the brand equity of Grameen Group as a whole pays us a lot. Uh, apart from healthcare, Grameen is uh, working in so other many areas where we have got a very good brand equity, positive brand equity from the mass people. So that help, it helps us a lot. And of course, last but not the least, the image and the philosophy of the Nobel laureate, Dr. Yunus, is gives us a big mileage, big leverage of having this confidence in the people's mind. So these are the few, there are more, but I am naming the, the key differentiators which really separate us from others while we offer our eye care to the people of Bangladesh. So Sar also mentioned that you are running, managing a nursing college. So yeah. can you briefly tell us about the nursing college, uh, why the nursing college, Grameen group established the nursing college and what is the plan for the nursing college and what collaboration you are managing in the nursing college and what are the benefits for the country and at the same time the um, remote nursing students or nurses future. Can you tell us okay. something briefly, please? Yeah, surely. I, I, I will, I will brief, uh, short brief. So again, like, likewise, in the, in the area of ophthalmologist, in the area of nursing, we have huge scarcity, huge, huge scarcity. And the recent COVID period uh, was an eye-opener for all of us, where, where it came, we came across the real picture, the what is actually needed and what is the supply. So there was a huge gap between the supply and the demand part of it. Okay. And as a part of it, we started uh, uh, nursing college uh, uh, back in 20, uh, 2007. So, and it, it had a good start. And it started with the collaboration for one of the very renowned global nursing uh, uh, university in the globe, we call the Glasgow Caledonian University. So, we, the, the, and that's how the collaboration, the name is being named as GCCN, Glamin Caledonian uh, College of Nursing. So this is just to let you know that this is already holding the number, the, the, the number one position in terms of uh, nursing institute, nursing colleges in Bangladesh. We do offer five courses from here. We do offer diploma courses in uh, nursing, diploma courses in midwifery. We offer post basic, we offer BSc nursing courses, and we also offer MSc. We are also working the to, to our, our ultimate dream is to reach to that level uh, of uh, the nursing PhD degree also, we are working with that. We are working with all the requisites of part of it. We are working. And apart from this, we are having strong collaboration with other big names in the nursing uh, area. Likewise, I, I'd like to mention that we are working with the Hiroshima University of Japan, so they are a big name in, in this uh, area. We are working uh, with uh, Adelphi University of uh, New York, USA. We are working with uh, Georgetown University of again from USA. So these are the areas, uh, these are the collaborations we are working. So we are not, we are not limiting ourselves in terms of our pre uh, preparing our nurses uh, in, the, in the horizon of the, uh, all the local context only. We, are, we want to be global. We are having uh, 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 our, our, our faculty is being trained, having their foreign degrees, working as faculty. We are having full focus into faculty development. We believe that the, the good, a strong faculty can really build good nurses. 
So this is how we are doing. We are trying. And of course, uh, we have a big dream to go about it. And in near future, we would like to have also the overseas students in our campus. That's how we are aiming our operation and everything. Okay. 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 And you have a plan also to build, a, uh, to establish a, another nursing college in Chitong. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. We, absolutely. We, are almost, we are almost ending in the ending part, but I okay. have one question from the audience. The question is, I'm just... A puppy mute. I cannot hear you. You are muted. Sorry. Uh, we have a plan to start a... This is question from the uh, audience. We have a plan for the international hospital. When it will start? And what is the, what is the time frame? Can you please show in two okay. like? Can you tell us? Yeah. As I said, uh, we call it somatic health complex as a whole. This complex will have four uh, components here. One, nursing college is already operating. 500 bed uh, uh, teaching tertiary hospital will be there, which will be there. Uh, there will be a, uh, a training institute, research institute, and of course, a medical college. So as I said, we have we are already done with all the detailing, drawing, design part of it. We have deployed with the world, uh, uh, the world reported firms who have the expertise of doing such designs and drawings with local expertise, we are done with the drawing and designs. So things are uh, placed in the, for the approval for the authorities' approvals. We are waiting for the approvals. We hope that in After the next few, few months' time, we will uh, uh, get these approvals. Start the hospitals. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. okay. And last question one is, you mentioned that you have four hospitals presently. So which are the places? Can you tell us where it is? Yeah, yeah. So and what are the what are the activities of these hospitals? Okay. okay, okay, thank you. So first hospital, the first was in 2001, which established in Bogura, the northern part of the country. Then we had the southern part, the Borishal Hospital, which was established in 2010. Then we had uh, the another part is in the southern part is uh, the uh, Akubao, uh, in the north part, and and next the fourth one in 2020 we had. Uh, in Shathira, again, the south of, southern part of the country. So these are the four hospitals we are presently operating. And you talk about the services. In short, we offer the similar type of services from our from all our hospitals. First and foremost, we, uh, we offer outpatient services. We call it OP services. We uh, offer surgeries, various types of surgeries, cataract surgeries, SIS, FACO, other minor surgeries we offer. We offer outreach programs. So we uh, generate the camps in the distant areas so we can uh, have patients from there. We operate few suffer, uh, support services in the form of spectacle dispensing, in the form of uh, medicine dispensing. We do have this kind of services. And of course, last but not the least, we have the services for telepath, telecounseling, and uh, these kind of things for our primary eye care center in the vision centers. So these are the basic five services we offer from all our secondary hospitals. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your uh, details. Uh, thank you. Discussion, thank you very much. Now, uh, this is the time for the Gina. Gina, please, I'm going to hand over the thank session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to both our speaker and moderator for this great conversation. It was very interesting to know about the activities of Brahmin Healthcare Services, not only through eye care, but also through the nursing college, the future projects. Indeed, there's a huge shortage of qualified um, you know, medical professionals in Bangladesh, and it's great to see how uh, Grameen Healthcare Service is working to um, you know, train and take these people to the rural areas because often they're concentrated in the major cities and people in the rural areas don't have access. So thank you very much for doing that and um, for beautifully sharing your story here in today's conversation. So big round of applause to both our moderator and speaker for your time and again sharing this um, about your um, journey and activities. So. 
Um, so um, uh, with that, we conclude today's session. But before ending, we would like to see some a slideshow on uh, some of our upcoming activities. We do have Social Business Day, our annual gathering of social business enthusiasts, entrepreneurs, um, students, academics, etc. coming up in July. This will be held in Malaysia. Um, from June, uh, sorry, July 27th to 29th, um, and we will see um, a slideshow, but more information will be coming up on our social media. Please keep an eye on how to register, how to participate, and we will also have our um, uh, other academia events in November, uh, so I kind of request the IT team to play the slideshow on that. So thank you very much again. We will again see you uh, after Ramadan. Our lecture sessions will continue, so till then, uh, stay well and um, stay safe. Thank you very much. Thank I think please let this slide. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Melissa. Ami. Uh, please kindly mute yourself. Thank you. Bye-bye.